Hello, everybody. Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. There is, uh, hey, there's the crucifix right there. So you see the crucifix every single day. We do a daily offering at the end of my live cast each and every single day. But you see the featured link right there too, protestchildkilling.com. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel. You can access all my campaigns, all of my ministries, um, everything there. All the URLs we talk about, the links, everything we talk about here on these live streams each and every day. And we talk about a lot. We talk about different topics. Of course, I give spiritual direction, scriptural reflections, um, uh, uh, social commentary, church commentary. Today, you're going to get a little pro-life commentary. I'm going to discuss with you why the Republican Party is no longer pro-life. Now, you might ask, Father, they're not pro-life. Well, I'm going to explain to you why they're not pro-life. And then I'm going to give you the reasons why they are no longer pro-life. So I'm going to look at it from two different perspectives here. And I think that the answer is going to shock you. Uh, maybe it won't. I think astute pro-lifers understand what's going on in the mainstream corporate pro-life movement. And uh, many of you, though, uh, don't. I celebrated Mass today at a Pregnancy Resource Center, Life Choices in Altamont Springs uh, here in Florida. I do so every single month. You should be supporting your Pregnancy Resource Centers near you. That is the best thing that you can do right now to save as many babies as we can until we can save all the babies through the abolition of preborn child killing through constitutional personhood from the moment of conception. Wow, I just see a fire. A fire destroyed the historic St. Anne's Church in Toronto. This is the 33rd church in Canada destroyed by fire since 2021. Wow. Wow. Let's say a Hail Mary, all right, for uh, these uh, parishioners, uh, Catholic, Christian. They don't say whether it's a 33rd Catholic church or just uh, 33 churches. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, holy Mary, mother of God. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, so I'm Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. We're going to talk about the Republicans and their uh, why they're not pro-life anymore, what led up to it, what caused it. I think the answer is going to surprise you, so stay with us. Uh, and again, protestchildkilling.com is the featured link. Uh, and so uh, stay with us. We're going to do our opening prayers like we do each and every single day. And then we are going to come back and uh, talk about pro-life stuff. Pro-life, the Republican Party. And you're going to get some prayers. You're going to get prayers. You're going to get scriptural direction. Uh, you're going to get... Uh, hmm. Some church, social, and pro-life commentary. All right, very good. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Start off invoking St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. 
Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspire with this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins. Our Mother, to you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. St. Joseph, my patron saint, I was born on the Feast of St. Joseph, March 19th. I pray for us. Today is the Memorial of St. Barnabas. St. Barnabas and Paul uh, say, we are of the same nature as you human beings. We announce the good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God. St. Barnabas was an apostle, one of the first apostles after the original 12 apostles and the first uh, missionary journey of St. Paul. St. Barnabas was there with him. So St. Barnabas intercede for us. All right, let's get to the topic, all right? So a year ago, I posted this. So June 2023. Now, June 2023, early in the primaries, um, Mike Pence was in the primaries. There was a whole slew of people in the primaries, right? I think uh, the Republican Party topped off at like 18 people in the Republican primary. So it was early on, other than rape and incest, President Trump, uh, had not rejected the pro-life position, uh, and uh, uh, well, let me let me explain. Okay, so I posted something a year ago, and it says from the New York Times. It says the run-up, the run-up. Okay, and this was Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony. We're looking for the National Defender of Life who will lead and advocate the consensus position for life. The, I mean, I have never heard that term from a pro-life leader. We're talking about Margie Dannenfelser joined Asted Herndon of the New York Times. The run-up to discuss pro-life protections and the 2024 election. So Margie Dannenfelser is talking to the New York Times about a consensus position for life. No, at nowhere, ever, in the pro-life movement, in the 50 years plus we've been killing babies, has anyone ever talked about a consensus position on life? And she's looking for an advocate. This is a year ago. And she found the advocate. She found Lindsey Graham, the rhino, the pleno. Lindsey Graham, pro-life in name only, Republican in name only, as liberal a Republican as you can get. Yes, he supposedly has great pro-life credentials. Nonsense. He proposes a 15-week ban along with Susan B. Anthony. 15-week ban with exceptions that would sacrifice 95 to 98% of the babies. You staying with me here? You staying with me? Okay. Around this time last year, Mike Pence, pro-IVF, Mike Pence, embraces the 15-week ban. These guys all announced it on the debate stage. You might remember all of the Republican candidates on the debate stage. They're all embracing the 15-week ban. Some wouldn't embrace the 15-week ban, not because, not because they thought it was too crazy. I mean, crazy in terms of Sacrifice 95 to 98% of the babies. That's crazy. No pro-lifers going to sacrifice 95 to 98% of the babies. But they thought, they thought it was too restrictive. 
They thought so. Some some would not put their stamp on the fifteen week ban. And I believe if one of, if I remember correctly, one of the debates they actually asked about the fifteen week ban, and some unequivocally came out and said yes, 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 yes. This was a Lindsey Graham proposal with Susan B. Anthony. Susan B. Anthony was the major force behind the 15-week ban with rape and incest exceptions, maybe even health of the mother exceptions. 95 to 98% of the babies sacrificed. Now, their, their, their point was that the, the, the Democrats were killing babies up to the day of birth. They were okay killing every baby, any baby. So the consensus position is we're going to show that they're too extreme, that we are willing to only save five to three, three to five percent of the baby. We're willing to sacrifice 95 percent of the babies. 15 week ban. It's Margie Danenfeld, so Lindsey Graham, Mike Pence, My, Mike Pence, pro IBF. Mike Pence, who on one hand talks about how he wants constitutional protection equal protection under the law, 15-week ban, pro-IVF. I mean, Mike Pence was, well, full of crap all over the place. You want to talk about political expediency. But this is where the Republican Party was, okay? This is where they were. So you have Kristen Hawkins and Susan B. Anthony, Margie Danifelsa, Propping up Mike Pence, pushing this 15-week ban. What happens? What happens? The next thing you know is Trump rejects the 15-week ban. He starts talking 16 weeks, 15, 16 weeks, and you know, 16 weeks because he didn't want to be as restrictive as 15 weeks. He didn't want to, he didn't want to say 15 weeks because Pence was 15 weeks. So he starts rejecting these bans. He felt betrayed. And I've talked about this before. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement, Margie Danenfelser and Kristen Hawkins, propping up Mike Pence, upset President Trump. He felt betrayed. So, so Trump not only starts talking rape and incest exceptions, he starts talking about, I don't think I can support a 15-week ban. Then the criticism comes, right? Pence, finally, everybody sees him for the phony that he is. Absolute phony. Nobody likes Mike Pence, if you ever see this video, your pure ego is what caused you to run for president, blinded by the fact that nobody likes you. Nobody. Nobody. And just so you people know, Margie Danenfeld, so propping up Mike Prince, calling him a pro-life hero. Kristen Hawkins, Students for Life of America, calling Mike Pence a pro-life hero. Mike Pence was the first major Republican, he was governor of Indi Indiana, who folded to the LBGTQ agenda. Came out publicly in, in favor of, pro, uh, of, of IVF, 15-week ban, rape and incest exceptions. Trump comes out and says, well, I don't know. They, they criticize Trump. So they're criticizing Trump, propping up pets. 15-week ban. Trump comes out and says, I don't know what's going on with the, this pro-life movement. It seems like big business to me. That was about a year ago. Calls the mainstream corporate pro-life movement big business. Now, mind you, Frank Pavone never wavered. Right, The pro-life leader, formerly known as Father Frank Pavone, Frank Pavone, never wavered. He's idolized Trump. He'll always idolize Trump. Trump is his idol. That's it. All right. Uh, but it just goes to show the lack of influence that Pavone has. Because Pavone, idolizing Trump, did nothing to sway Trump from throwing the mainstream corporate pro-life movement under the bus. 
And him calling the mainstream corporate pro-life movement big business, he was absolutely right. Priest for Life, Susan B. Anthony, Kristen Hawkins, Students for Life, Human Coalition, Live Action, um, uh, 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 40 Days for Life. These are multi-million dollar, I mean, up to 15, 18 million dollar organizations that spend tens of millions of dollars on marketing. And what do we get? 15 week ban with rape and incest exceptions that sacrifices 95 to 98% of the babies. And this is consensus right here. I'm reading New York Times. This is a post from Susan B. Anthony. It's a post from Susan B. Anthony. On Instagram last year, we are looking for a national defender of life who will lead and advocate the consensus position for life. That was Mike Pence. Upset Donald Trump. Trump throws the pro-life movement under the bus. The rest is history. Trump disavows the entire pro-life agenda. Because after Pence drops out, they all go and follow DeSantis. Six-week ban. So what does, what does Trump do? He disavows the six-week ban. Because he knew he didn't need the mainstream corporate pro-life movement to win the primary. That proved to be true. So he threw them under the bus knowing that they had no place else to go. So lo and behold, lo and behold, as bad as Trump has gotten, poo-pooing any anti-IVF, poo-pooing any pro-life legislation, poo-pooing uh, 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 six-week ban, 15, I mean, poo-pooing everything. There's still Kristen Hawkins, Sean Carney, Margie Danifel, sir, they're all back on board with Trump. Well, Father, do you support Trump? I tell you, I will support Donald Trump if the situation stays exactly the way it is today. There's no change in the situation today come November for the two seconds it takes for me to hold my nose, hold my nose, and pull the lever for Trump. That's it. Other than that, I'm going to call it like I see it. Am I upset that Trump has disavowed his pro-life position? Absolutely. Am I glad that he overturned Roe versus Wade? Absolutely. Am I upset that the mainstream corporate pro-life movement didn't know what to do? They lied to us, saying that they were ready for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. They had no clue. They finally admitted after a year of celebrate two years now. They're going to celebrate on June 22nd. Celebrate life. Celebrate life. Everything's okay. The Republican Party, which now will not endorse any pro-life legislation nationally. Nationally, and I've always called them the party of omission, but they're really becoming more the party of commission light. The Democrats are the party of commission. The Republicans used to be the party of omission. Now they're becoming the party of commission light. Federally, nationally, they will not endorse any pro-life legislation. Nothing. They don't want to seem extreme in the least. They're not even moderate. But this all came about just as I laid it out to you just as I laid it out. The reason why the National Republican Party is no longer pro-life is because the mainstream corporate pro-life movement since the overturning of Roe versus Wade has refused from the very beginning to grab onto abolition. From the very beginning. Well, Father, if they do it now, I think they should still do it. You stand on the moral absolute. You stand on the constitutional absolute. I think they should still do it because what is God going to bless? If we go down losing, if we go down in flames, at least we do standing on the moral absolute and the constitutional absolute and not being political idolaters. But if they'd gotten on from the minute the Roe versus Wade was overturned, if they had gotten on board, with constitutional person from the moment of conception, constitutional crisis, these pre-born babies are being denied their constitutional rights. 
They're being excluded from the Constitution and were mass murdering them. If that was the position they had taken since June of 2022, the Republican Party would be forced to be a pro-life party abolitionist. They'd be the party of their roots, the party of Lincoln, the party of abolition. The party, the constitutional party. But no. Because of mammon, because of wealth, because of fame, because of political influence or the desire for political influence, which is mammon. Wealth, fame, mammon. Political influence, political experience, it's all mammon, it's all mammon. The mainstream corporate pro-life movement. And they will not admit it. Susan B. Anthony is still on board with this 15-week ban. They still think that the strategy should be to point the Democrats as these extremists who will kill babies up to the day of birth, but will only kill babies up to 15 weeks, will only kill 95 to 98% of the babies. And then, of course, you have Kristen Hawkins. She's all over the place. Um, Lila Rose is talking about marriage and sexuality and the culture, right? And a year ago, she was the new North Star. This year, we don't know where she's going to be, all right? Uh, Frank Pavone, oh, put on my MAGA hat, picture of Trump in the back. I idolize Trump, I idolize Trump. What a mess. What a mess. It's a mess. So the Republicans, pro-life-wise, are a mess. Why? Because the mainstream corporate pro-life movement has led them to this mess, has allowed them to wallow in this mess, and they will not do anything to correct it. That's it. It's the start, the beginning, the whole sordid story. All right. So did you hear that Hunter Biden was convicted of gun charges? I guess actually lying, filling out a false application. I don't know what. So I just posted this this morning here. So a year ago, two years, I'm sorry, two years ago today, I was in an ICU in Tallahassee. Trump is a convicted felon. Hunter Biden is a convicted felon. Joe Biden will be a convicted felon. We're having a good time now, right? History's having a good time now. What a mess. What a, what a mess. God help us. God have mercy on us. In my mind, our country is finished without a miracle of divine intervention. The country roundly rejected Carter after his first term. Biden makes Carter look like Lincoln let half the country, yet half the country is, is with him. So seven years ago, seven years ago, I was at Natuno Beach. You know where Natuno, Italy is? Natuno, Italy is about an hour and a half outside of Rome the home of Maria Goretti. So I get there around noontime. I celebrate Mass in the morning. I get to Natuno around noontime, early afternoon. I go and have a beautiful lunch because the basilica, the cathedral, the church that Maria Goretti's remains are is closed is closed until four o'clock. So there's a beach right across the street. So for three euros, I get on the beach and I get a, I get a, a lounge chair. So I have a beautiful afternoon on the beach. I have a nice lunch right on the beach, restaurant right on the beach. Hang out for the afternoon, having a cigar on the beach, lounge chair. Four o'clock, I go across the street and spend an hour with Maria Goretti, just me and her in the crypt church while mass is going on upstairs. How cool is that? I mean, how cool is that?
All right, what else seven years ago? There it is, at the Church of St. Maria Goretti, praying the rosary in the crypt in front of her remains for all of those who specifically asked for intercession, all who asked me to pray for them on this trip. So that was such a great day. I mean, a memorable day. Four years ago, during the whole COVID debacle, Summer of Floyd, remember that, Summer of Floyd? The only thing not over as to the COVID-19 is the government, quote unquote, knee to the neck oppression of the economy and the people. I can't breathe. Well, then go outside and don't wear your mask. See, that was my mindset back then. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That was my, that was my mindset. Right? Remember in May on the anniversary of my of my ordination four years ago, fifteenth anniversary of my ordination, I went and got arrested in Washington, DC. Didn't care. My life did not change one bit because of COVID. Not one bit. None. Matter of fact, actually, that's not true. It caused me to go on the road and get out of New Mexico and get out of Albuquerque because things were really crazy there. But as far as me, toeing the line, being oppressed, allowing them to suppress, no way, no way. All right, very good. So let's uh, let's continue praying, all right? Let's pray uh, a Hail Mary for all those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations, whether it be cancer, heart disease, strokes, diabetes, um, clinical depression, suicidal ideation. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Check out my mass from this morning. Again, St. Barnabas, a homily on salt and light, although I didn't preach on that. I was at Life Choices right across, the, right next door to the abortion facility in Altamont Springs, Florida. Life Choices, great work. Uh, the homily, the gospel is on salt and light. And I kind of did, but I don't think I mentioned salt and light. Uh, but it was a good homily. I think it was a very good homily. Did an interview this morning with JMJ Radio, too. So uh, if you come across that, if you're in their listening area, check that out. It's their Father's Day show. Okay, very good. All right, so we pray the Our Father. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope uh, through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you. Father, send the Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church. Remain for us examples of your, of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, St. Barnabas, St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. All right. Daily offering, offer up your work time, prayer time, family time, recreational time, and ask our Lord to shed his mercy upon all of your personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial intentions, vocational intentions, the intentions of all those who we say we would pray for each day, including those who may forget to pray for and for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, and support us each day, right? Our daily offering, that's how we pray ceaselessly, we turn our day into a prayer, right? All right, and then realestateforlife.org, realestateforlife.org. Uh, if you're buying a home, selling a home, moving from a blue state to a red state, realestateforlife.org, and they'll donate a portion of their commission to a pro-life advocate or activist of your choice. Consider the pro local pregnancy resource center near you and donate to them. Aladyofamerica.com, there's the image, there's the diary, there's the statue. 
the approved USCCB private devotion, Our Lady of America.com. I'm Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Check out my mass, my homily. Uh, Eucharist, no Eucharistic adoration this morning, I'm sorry. Uh, but my homily, uh, the mass this morning, my YouTube channel again, uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel, invite your family and friends to join us. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.